Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Instar Direct is really excited to offer this free class on how to improve your property on a budget um, with simple home improvement hacks. Uh, I'll start by introducing myself. Uh, I'm Lewis Jays from Instar Direct. And uh, in case you didn't know, Instar Direct is an interior design company that believes that everyone can improve their property um, with any budget. And it's with that spirit that Instar is running this class today for free. And uh, so whether you want to increase the appeal of your home or improve your, uh, your home yourself or your investment, this is definitely gonna be the right webinar for you. Um, I know we're all spending a lot of time at, at home right now. And uh, I've certainly been thinking about my space, my home and using it in new ways and analyzing every little corner. So it's a good time to invest in making these things more beautiful um, for yourselves and for your prospective tenants. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, on the agenda for uh, the next 35 minutes or so, we're gonna cover uh, the fundamentals to consider um, with interior design, uh, real life styling in practice, and uh, how to add real value and then we'll go on to a, a Q&A. Uh, we'll answer as many uh, questions as the time allows um, at the end. So uh, I think we've actually already got some questions which have already been sent in. So we'll cover those first and then we'll move on to any extra questions after that. Uh, so before we dive uh, directly into uh, the interior design tips, I'm just gonna go over a few fundamentals to consider before starting um, an interior design project or uh, it's basically to help you avoid costly mistakes um, that will take time and money to put right. And um, yeah, so I mean, you'll want to start by asking yourself, how will this space be used? Um, map out which activities take place and how each area is going to be used. Make sure all the needs are accommodated and think about non-essentials that you'd like to incorporate yourself, either for yourself uh, or to differentiate your property from the competitive lettings market, um, or maybe a dedicated working space from home or an open plan layout to host dinner parties. Um, I think it's definitely something to consider how the space will be used first. Then ask yourself, uh, what is my priority? So take the time to identify which bits of your property or home already function and um, which don't. Uh, in, a, in the sense of openness is great, but lack of storage is very frustrating, or you may find the layout has no flow. Um, working out where you need to focus your budget and attention is really important. Um, but you also need to ensure you don't lose sight of the bigger picture and um, overall look and feel of the property too. Um, I think the next thing to consider will be um, what will make the biggest difference. Now, if you're redecorating, renovating or styling, it can be quite stressful, um, especially with uh, multiple rooms involved. Uh, tackling one area at a time will give you um, focus to reduce the disruption. And uh, so I'd suggest um, working out what change will make the biggest difference to your daily life and starting from there. Um, this could be redoing the most used space or knocking down a wall to sort a uh, a basic layout um, issue, or if you're embarking on a total renovation, then things might be more set in stone, like uh, structural changes, rewiring, plumbing, and plastering. Um, it will, will most likely uh, need to be done in a certain order, um, but breaking the work down into smaller chunks and plotting out a timeline will make um, the thing seem much more manageable. Um, as well as giving you time to think ahead about decisions um, that you'll need to make further down the line in the future too. And uh, lastly, um, a question which is, I think, very important uh, is, will this work in two years' time? Now, uh, none of us want to spend a lot of time and money on decorating a project, only for it to look, you know, uh, within a year or two dated. So, of course, it's hard to predict exactly how... Um, you know, needs will change in the future now more than ever, but being aware of potential issues helps us create spaces that can evolve and adapt. For example, if you think a home office might one day be used as a playroom, 
then um, you choose hardware flooring and leave the space for additional storage. Um, or if you're rewiring as part of a renovation, for example, add in a few extra channels to allow for advancing technology or any different kind of future use. Um, what's more, focusing on, on timeless style uh, and avoiding anything that's centered entirely around the current trends, um, particularly when it comes to big spends like your kitchen or bathroom, it will lessen the risk um, of spaces looking dated really quickly. Um, Keeping these, I think keeping these fundamentals in mind will help you focus on these needs and uh, acting on uh, impulse at the time. Whether you're redecorating or rede redesigning a single room or embarking on a top to bottom renovation, uh, I hope they will uh, give you the confidence and clarity to practice these tips and techniques that you're, that you're here today. Um, so uh, on to next, I'm gonna pass you on to Sarah. So uh, Sarah is our inter interior design guest blogger. Um, she's gonna cover a few topics, uh, choosing the right wall color, um, upcycling patio tiles and furniture, uh, creating the illusion of more space. And she'll then finish up with a live styling session uh, to show you just how quickly and easily it is to make a big difference. Um, and uh, yeah, Sarah, off over to you. Hi, uh, I'm Sarah. It's great to be here today. Uh, I'm an interior designer and styling blogger and I run the Instagram account The Northern Home. Uh, I've always enjoyed styling rooms and making spaces look beautiful. Uh, but when I bought my first house nearly uh, three years ago, it became something of a passion. Um, I'll start my video, but I hope this is okay. Um, moving into a new build house, which was essentially a white shell, uh, I really wanted to put my own stamp on the place and prove that new builds can have character too. Um, and once I started thinking about decorating the rooms and styling, I really wanted to take photos and share them with my friends, but people just weren't interested. So a couple of years ago, I decided to set up my own Instagram account so I could share images of my home. Um, I've got a little bit of experience in photography, so having an interiors blog was a great way to practice my skills with the camera. Um, my DIY projects, upcycling, and any decorating or styling posts that I create um, that I create usually get a lot of interest from my followers and engagement. And I really love seeing it when um, people like are inspired to do their own projects based on something that I've done. For me, I would say that my niche is sort of accessible interiors. Creating a beautiful home doesn't necessarily have to cost you a lot of money. Um, it's quite easy to bring old furniture back to life um, and prevent pieces from going to landfill, um, you know, or waste, um, especially if you don't have a huge budget. Um, I describe my style as modern, Scandi, industrial, um, and I really like to use a neutral color palette complemented by pops of color in every room, which you will see uh, as I continue this presentation. So uh, please can I have the first slide. Yeah, so uh, this one I want to talk about um, is choosing the right color for a room. Uh, the example that you've got on the screen there is uh, my guest bedroom. Um, prior to me painting it, you can see it was just a white box, not very much life to it at all. Um, so you had, I had to choose a color that would work in this space. So what I would suggest doing is, you know, work out what you're going to use that room for. Is the room going to be a place where you entertain guests, so your living space, or is it going to be, you know, somewhere that you want to relax and be cozy, like a bedroom, for example? Um, I would suggest putting testers on all of the walls in the room um, so that you can see how the colour looks throughout the day, because obviously as the sun moves, the colour changes on the walls as well. Um, in this room, I had my heart set on using Farrow and Ball's Sulking Room Pink, but then when I got it on the walls in here, it looked really dirty and it just didn't look like I'd imagined it and like I'd seen on other people's photographs. So I wanted something pink, I knew that, um, but I wanted it to be sort of muted and neutral too, which is why I ended up stumbling upon this color as it looked perfect in the room. Um, the other thing I want to talk about when about choosing a color is not just choosing the color itself, but choosing how you want that color to be on the wall. Do you want that to be a feature wall or do you want that to be on all of your walls? For me, I wanted to create a feature. I wanted to create something a bit bold, something with a bit of interest so that my guests would feel like they come to a really special place to stay. So that's why I decided on the 
block color feature wall. Um, and that goes all around the room. Um, it makes such an impact. Um, and But it's also not too overfacing because it's a lighter um, sort of muted, neutrally pink color. The next thing that I want to talk about is upcycling, which is something that I've done around the home. Um, this is in the same bedroom. Um, when we moved into our house, we had quite a lot of mismatched furniture. Uh, we'd acquired it over the years. I'm sure many people can relate to this. Um, these uh, wardrobes and drawers, these have been with me since I was about 17 years old. So they're about 12 years old and they came from my parents' house. They were still working absolutely fine. So I didn't feel like I wanted to throw them to landfill. And I also didn't think that anybody would be interested in them in a charity shop. So I decided to have a little look to see how I could upcycle them. I honestly thought it would be impossible to cover that high gloss on the front. Um, however, after a bit of research, I found some really great paint called Zinza All Coat, which is a fantastic paint to use for any sort of project like this. Um, and I got that color match to a color that I liked. I prepped um, and primed all of the furniture. And then I coated these wardrobes in three coats of paint. Um, I then spray painted the handles gold and I bought some legs for the drawers. And within a weekend, they were completely transformed. Um, it's hard to believe it's the same furniture, really. This cost me less than £100 to do, and it's made such a huge difference. Um, one thing I would recommend um, if you are thinking about taking on an upcycling project is to ensure that you clean and prime the surface before starting, to in, starting your project, just to ensure that at the end you get a perfect finish. Um, upcycling is something that I've done all over the house um, with different various things from big pieces like that to also doing things outside. Um, so last spring, I decided to paint and stencil my outdoor patio slabs. Um, please can I have the next slide? So uh, the slabs that we had were ones that had been put down by the builder. Um, we'd had a, a landscaper come and sort of tidy up the garden and lay us some grass and they laid some extra slabs too but because we just moved in our budget couldn't quite stretch to the ideal perfect tiles that I wanted so after seeing this idea on Instagram which is the fountain of all ideas and um, if you're ever looking to do something go to Instagram I'm sure you'll find something that will spark something off in your head um, I decided to go for these tiles just using some masonry paint and a stencil um, they transformed the look of the patio in just a couple of days. They went from being completely dull and boring to something that's really interesting. Um, it makes the garden feel like a little Moroccan oasis. And the amount of people that have asked me how, like where to buy the tiles from has been quite astounding. Um, after seeing photos, people honestly think they're real tiles. Um, so yeah, they were a really, really quick and easy win and they've made a huge difference um, and really, really effective. So the next thing that I want to talk about is um, mirrors and creating the illusion of more space using mirrors. Um, that's, you know, using mirrors is a fantastic way to create illusions around the house. I have them everywhere and um, they bounce light around the room and they also help to make the room feel bigger, which in a new build property is, you know, quite essential because the rooms aren't always massive. Um, the, the example I'm talking about here, this is uh, my main bedroom. Um, as you can see, by placing the mirror opposite the bed, it creates the illusion that the mirror is a doorway into another room and it gives the room some depth. I think if you look at the before photograph, you can see how it makes the room look sort of stunted and small without the mirror in place. So I would suggest placing a mirror opposite another wall or, you know, opposite an item of interest in your room like the bed, as it really creates a really good reflection. So uh, the final thing that I'm going to talk about today is about styling. Um, so I'm shortly going to swap over devices and I'm going to go and do a little styling session for you here in my kitchen diner. Um, so if you just give me 30 seconds, I will swap over.
Please can somebody enable my other device? Brilliant. Hi, and um, welcome to my kitchen dining space. Um, this is the space that I use to entertain guests. It is the space that leads out to my garden as well. So as you can see, it's a white space because I wanted it to be bright and airy. And the first thing that I want to talk about with styling is choosing the color palette. So for me, I think choosing a color palette is something that you probably only need a few colors for. Um, as you can see in here, I've got white. Um, I've also got brown from my table um, and from the jute rug down here. I also use tones of black as well and gray from the, the industrial shelf up on the wall and from the steel legs on the dining table as well. And then to sort of bring this space to life, um, I've used green in the top of the sofa. The sofa in here is really the feature and I've then used green around the rest of the kitchen too, which is something that I'll show you shortly. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some plants to the space. I think as we are right by the garden, it's really nice to bring some of that outdoors in. Um, so I love having lots of plants in here because they do really bring, bring a place to life. So I'm going to start by adding a couple of big ones either side of the sofa to help frame the sofa underneath the mirror. The next thing I'm going to do is add some plants onto this shelf. So as you can see, I've got various different plants and different pots, but they all sort of tie into the same color theme. Um, and the other thing I would say is choose things of different heights. So we've got a tall one here, but then we've got one that hangs down. I'm gonna add some more to these hooks as well. Um, and with the hooks, you'll see that there are varying heights too, as that helps to create interest. The other thing I'll mention is um, I like to style shelves in odd numbers. So instead of having four things on here, I'm adding a fifth just so it doesn't look completely symmetrical. Um, I just think it gives a nice, um, a nice thing to look at for the eye when it's in odd numbers. So then I'm also going to add in a side table next to the sofa because you always need a side table. You won't be able to properly see on the video, but the side table has um, like black metal legs, which ties into the shelving and to the table. And the um, top of the side table is a marble effect. And as this room has the kitchen in it as well, I want the whole space to flow. So the marble top on the side table really ties into the quartz worktops that I have in the kitchen. And does, it just creates a flow. Um, same thing for other bits I have in the kitchen. I have wooden chopping boards, I have black lighting and it all just flows between both spaces. Um, a side table is brilliant because you can use it to put your coffee and tea on, but it's also fantastic for having a table lamp. Um, a table lamp is really important in this big space like this because it means that if you don't want to have the spotlights on and you want it to be more of a, a cozy, more of an ambient space, you can change your lighting and you can use the side lamp instead of the big lights. Um, and it really helps to change the space from day to night, uh, depending on what you are doing. So the final thing that I'm going to add in here is this bolster cushion for the sofa. As you can see, the sofa is not huge. It's probably a two, two and a half person sofa. And we do have quite a lot going on in here already. 
So I'm just going to add this one simple cushion to the sofa so as not to overclutter the space and just pare back the sofa a little bit so it can do its own thing being the you know, feature that it is. The cushion ties in really well with the jute. And I was also just going to mention um, about using textures. I think when styling, it's really important to use various textures as that brings everything to life. It gives everything depth. Um, as you can see, I've got a variety here. I've got some like natural textures like the wood. I've got some man-made textures like the metals. But then I've also got some softer things in here like the jute rug, the velvet sofa, and then the jute plant pots as well. So it brings everything together. Um, and yeah, the best way to elevate a space is to use various textures. Um, so I hope that that was really helpful. Um, and if you would like to see any more of my styling or any more of my home, please visit my Instagram account, which will be on the screen now. Thanks very much. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Sarah. Um, if you'd like any more inspiration from Sarah, her Instagram handle is uh, there on the screen. And uh, we'll also share it with um, the video, with the email, uh, which we'll send after the webinar. Now, um, just a few other pointers before we go to the Q&A. Um, I'm, I'm now in, my, in our head office here in London. And I'm going to talk through just a few points, which I think is important for particularly for our investors and landlords um, when it comes to interior design. I think um, the importance of uh, furniture and furnishings, I think um, landlords sometimes um, struggle with tenants who uh, have a lot of choice in the market, in especially in London, where all the new builds are very, very similar, similar layout, similar finishing, and uh, tend to struggle to visualize themselves actually living there. Some spaces seem even weirdly smaller when you don't have furniture in there. But when you have it fully furnished, people can see the layout, they can see themselves uh, living there. And I think... Um, using, for example, one of our, our furniture packs here at Instar Direct, uh, where it's the full inventory and everything's installed and assembled uh, by one of our interior designers, I think um, it makes a big difference and you need to stand out in the, in the lettings market. Um, I think uh, the next thing which is very important is our window dressing. So uh, blinds and curtains, I think doing it the right way is very important. Having you know, uh, curtains which are too high off the ground or too low from the ceiling, I think um, you should definitely get advice from um, a, a professional when it comes to your to your window dressing. Having things like uh, voils behind the curtains so that you still have privacy, but um, you're, you still have that light flooding, natural light flooding through the through the through your home is really important. And again, it's really attractive for tenants and even if you're selling your property for um for buyers to to just feel a bit more homely with especially the new builds then there are a few other um things i wanted to talk about which were kind of quick fixes essentially i think uh one of the things would be a lick of paint um having everything painted white sometimes seems a bit clinical and all of the properties are painted white, especially the new builds so Having uh, either a feature wall, doesn't have to be the whole room, just a feature wall or um, painting it just a different shade makes it makes such a big difference. Again, just makes the property have a bit more character, stand out amongst the crowd within um, within the, the lettings market. And another thing would be new soft furnishing. So cushions, rugs, um, mirrors, artwork, making sure it all ties in within the similar palette and uh, it will make it stand out with, with a lot of what's in the market at the moment. Um, and then also not forgetting to do a deep clean. It makes a big difference when um, a client comes in and, you know, you don't have 
uh, dust on the skirting boards or around the windows and things like that. Having a good deep clean, uh, making everything all freshen up and, and nice makes a really big difference. So uh, I think those will definitely help more on the investor side, but I think those three things are, are, are essential. Um, my email address, uh, if it should be on the screen now. So if you um, like to get in touch for any advice for uh, getting um, either uh, furniture packages or if you're looking to rent or, or sell your property in London and need help home staging, or even if you're a homeowner and looking to get a more tailored um, interior design service, uh, feel free to pop us over an email or phone call. Um, we have showrooms across London, so more than happy to meet anyone at, at one of our, our showrooms. Um, okay, so we can have a, a Q&A now for the next uh, uh, few minutes. We've still got some time left. Um, I've already been sent in some uh, questions, uh, so I'll, I'll share them with Sarah. So we'll go back and forth uh, and see if we can answer them the right way. Let's see. Um, so I've got one here from uh, Susan, Susan Marks. Uh, which interior design project gets the most ROI? So rent on return on investment. Um, well, I think it depends if you're a homeowner or, or a landlord. I think if you're a homeowner, I guess uh, investing in uh, obviously furniture that you like um, and uh, furniture that's going to last a long time, especially when it comes to your hard furnishings like your sofas and beds, Having choosing the right materials, materials that are treated and, and but you obviously still enjoy the right colours. Things, again, like I think we mentioned before, not choosing your main items to, to be in the, the kind of style now. Try and get some of your larger items and more expensive items um, to, to be a bit more timeless and uh, try and choose a bit more neutral uh, colors. But um, if you're a landlord, then I'd say uh, definitely look at, at the, um, the kind of the lifetime of, of the furniture, look at more durable materials, things that's gonna last. People sometimes are a bit scared of using glass for dining tables and coffee tables, I disagree. I think sometimes, uh, well, especially the, the furniture which are made now is a very, very durable. They're gonna last a lot longer than wood or something, which is, um, you know, gonna carry stains and scratches and things. And um, makes things obviously a bit more lighter and airy and, uh, and better. So yeah, I think, uh, return on investment, those two things will probably help. Okay, we've got another question um, here from Thomas Daniels. Uh, maybe Sarah might be able to answer this one for us. Uh, are neutral colors the best for trying to rent or sell a home? I, I don't think so. I think this is a bit of a common misconception, really. Uh, people want homes that rival the ones that they see, like in show homes, you know, or they see on the TV or Instagram, for example. Um, and paint colors can really grab the tenant or a buyer's attention. Um, you know, we have, there's lots of different on-trend colors, um, like baby blues or dark blues, um, soft eggplant, you know, light and airy yellows. Um, and I think there's lots of different ways that you can bring those colors in, if, even if you don't want to put those onto a wall. You know, you can do things like I've done by adding a green sofa, or if you don't want to go as bold as adding a green sofa, add a neutral sofa, but get some pops of color in the soft furnishings. Um, perhaps look at the artwork on the walls. Maybe you could add some color in there and tie everything together in a different way. Um, it doesn't always have to be neutral um, to make it sellable. Um, can we have another question from uh, Tony, Tony Holding? Um, he says, uh, I'm keen to hire an interior designer as I don't have the time or skill to do it myself, uh, but I'm worried about the expense. Um, well, I, I'd say that um, overall you will save money. It sounds strange, but hiring an interior designer as well. Uh, I'll give you an example. Us here at Instar Direct, our interior designers have a catalog of suppliers with um you know we get trade discounts we we give you um such a larger variety of fabrics and colors to choose from and it comes down to if you're tailoring 
you know, uh, bespoke furniture. Or um, we also have our in-house furniture too, where we order from our suppliers in, in bulk for our furniture packages. So you're most likely going to get a higher quality for a lower price. And um, yeah, I'd say in terms of expense, it's also the time that you save as well. So, you know, if you go shop here, there and everywhere for every little item in your home, you're going to be uh, spending so much time going, not just going from shop to shop, but also delivery times. Then, you know, you have these extra costs of assembly and staging and things like that. Our, not just our interior design, interior designers in general, uh, they do everything for you. So yeah, I think um, it's not, it depends obviously if you're only getting one or two items, but still seek advice, you know, um, definitely speak to this. I don't think it will uh, high cut the expenses at all. Um, let's see here. We have uh, Rachel Chilcott from, uh, let's see here. How do I know which size rug is for the right room? Um, Sarah, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, um, rugs, the bigger, the better. You want the rug to take over most of the floor space in that room or in, or in the section of the room that, that you're looking at. Um, you know, rugs can get expensive, though. So one thing that I always make sure to do is um, ensure that sort of the, the front legs of the furniture, whether that's the bottom of a bed or whether that's a sofa, as long as those legs of the, the furniture can comfortably fit under the rug, um, then that's that's a good uh, thing to go off um, I wouldn't be afraid to push furniture together either like if the room's quite a big space it doesn't everything doesn't necessarily have to be backed up against the wall um, so yeah I hope that was helpful um, okay we've got another question from Adam um, will furnishing my home increase uh, the monthly rent I receive um, I'd say yes obviously uh, fully furnished property is going to rent higher than vacant properties. Um, well, vacant property, properties without furniture. Um, I'd say you're going to rent it quicker. So, um, you know, if your property is online and, and available and it's the same as the other 40 properties which are available in your, in your building, um, having the, I think we mentioned this before, a furnished property but furnished the right way is definitely going to rent it faster. So you're going to have a... You know, you're going to be saving money, getting it rented faster. You're not going to have just a, a stagnant investment there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to, it's definitely going to increase the the price you get over the long run, especially if you have furniture which is durable, furniture which is going to last over the years. You know, it's going to it's going to build up and it's going to definitely um, increase your your monthly rent. Let's see here. More questions. More questions. I've got one come through from. Uh, Philip says, um, uh, I've just started renting an unfurnished studio apartment uh, after moving from a larger house and can't afford to replace my furniture, which looks far too large. Help. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Sarah, would you have any advice for him? Yeah, sure. Like as the owner of a new build, um, I can sort of empathize, empathize with this problem. Um, but maybe have a think about how the room's furniture can be arranged. I think if you've come from a different house, you've probably got something in mind of how it would fit in your old house. Perhaps have a think about, you know, changing the look and the function of the room. Um, and, you know, that can simply just be done by moving the furniture around and just trying different things out. I think it can be really tempting to just place all the furniture against the walls. Um, um, but instead, you know, move the furniture around uh, to make the furniture part of the conversation. Um, it's OK to walk around a piece of furniture. It's OK not to have, you know, a walkway down the middle of the room um, and create like a slight obstacle. And, you know, if you've got different pieces of furniture, I think it's quite nice sometimes to have sort of a sofa in the middle of the room. But you could back a console onto the back of that sofa to create a bit more of a feature um, if it's feeling too big on, on a wall, perhaps. Um, you know, you shouldn't not only have to pull furniture away from the wall but you could pull you know pieces sort of away from each other um give the room a little bit of space to breathe and um, the other thing's really good way to do it especially if you've got a bit of a a big open space um use rugs for zoning the space um as i sort of showed you in my styling session um the jute rug under the dining table really helps to zone this space so that it's 
not part of the kitchen and it's not part of the sofa seating area but you know this space isn't massive but it works me having a kitchen and a table and a sofa in here and you wouldn't necessarily think that could be possible in the actual floor space that I have there thank we go. you <laughs> <laughs> um I've got another question here from Carol um uh, she decided to redecorate a house after three months on the market, uh, but haven't hasn't had any bites. Um, it, it's been on the market for uh, further months and I've had no interest. Is there anything I could have missed? Um, well, I think uh, if you've got your property in the market and you have redecorated it, um, like I said before, I think look at your furnishing, make sure the furnishing isn't, you know, if you've got a sofa which is too big, make sure it's practical too, people can walk around it. Um, when tenants and buyers walk out, I don't know if you're renting or, or going to, trying to sell the property, you need to think about the, when someone walks into your property, the, um, the impression that they get when they leave too. So I don't know if in the hallway, if it's completely empty, you could have beautiful rooms, but people tend to miss things like uh, the entrance of our, uh, of the property. I think a nice hall console with some accessories, a mirror, nice things. It's People don't really think about that sometimes, but it does make a big difference when you have a nice entrance. Um, and yeah, making sure the beds are clear. I think a few pointers, which I said before, making sure the beds are made, soft furnishings, new cushions, bits and bobs like that will make a big difference. Again, look at window dressing and and things like that. Um, hopefully that will help um, you in the, in the market and help you sell or rent it. Um, let's see here, I've got another question from Amanda. Uh, I bought a sofa 18 months ago, it already looks tired from student occupancy. Um, what are the alternatives to buying a new sofa? Uh, the alternatives, uh, I'd say uh, new cushions, throws, um and uh treatment too i guess looking at getting a good treatment for the fabric you could upholster um it's a slight expense there but i'd definitely say um putting a, a good throw of a good fabric over the the bottom half of the of the sofa will make a big difference with some matching cushions maybe like sarah showed us before i think will probably um uh make a bit of a difference uh let's have a look here other questions i this one's from charlie uh, i have a small kitchen with limited surface space which means i have to store my kettle in the cupboard uh, while i eventually plan to knock down the wall uh, le leading through to the dining room is there anything i can do in the meantime uh, sarah yeah uh, I can take that one. Um, so yeah, I completely understand that because I have quite a small kitchen myself too. I don't like having a lot of things out on the work surfaces. So I like you hide a few things away. The kettle does get to stay though because it gets used so often. Um, but what I would suggest is select a few sort of pretty items um, with a purpose. So for example, I've got chopping boards that are propped up against um, the tiles on the back of the kitchen. So they're not taking up surface space, but they are propped up and you can see them um, and that looks nice. The other things you can do is if you have like open shelves, you know, you could add hooks to those shelves. You could put pans and pots up there. Um, if you've got any nice mugs um, and cookbooks are always a nice thing to have on shelves as well and um, so that they're away from the, the surface if they're in the in the way um, I would say if you've got enough wall space um, put some shelving in if you don't already have some um, is it's a really great place to store loads of things like your cups your um, different mugs and also like your dinnerware and plates as well so you've got a bit more space in your cupboards to hide other things um, but just be careful when you fit shelves. Um, if the, the screws aren't incorrectly, um, you don't want everything to come tumbling down. I know people that's happened to, and there's nothing worse than having to replace all of your dinnerware and your tableware. Right, thank you. Um, I think we've got uh, a few more questions here. I think we've run out of time. I'll do a few more. Uh, let's see, a question from Maxine. Uh, is overhead lighting enough for a living room? Uh, I want to rent my flat and don't want to spend money on loads of lamps and also 
worried that they'll be broken with the tenancy. Um, I think, uh, like we said before, I think uh, staging the property with lamps like what Sarah's done in her, her kitchen area there, I think it does make a bit, bit of a difference when you're showing the property if you're going to rent it. Um, obviously, you could take them out during the tenancy, the tenant could replace it. But I think having low, you know, different light sources in every room of the house is, is important. It, it, it gives a different feel to a different time of the day, especially if it's north facing or south facing, if you have sun coming through during the day or not, or during the evening, it's, it's definitely something you should look into. I, I have a lamp on all of my side tables and floor lamp in most of the corners of my rooms in my home. So it does make a big difference, but, um, you know, lamps, you can, you can go to places now and you can get fairly cheap lamps that, you know, they, they look great. So um, I definitely think you should <laughs> get one if you can. Um, let's do uh, one more. Uh, There's a question from Katie. Uh, I've tried everything to make my large TV look unsightly. What can I do? Uh, Sarah, do you want to see that one? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yes, TVs, they seem to ruin every pretty room, don't they? Um, I think what you can do is sort of turn that wall into a bit of a feature in itself. So you can frame the TV up on the wall, but then around it, you could add some nice wall art um, or, you know, pieces of, uh, you know, prints um, just so that it sort of hides the TV a little bit. Um, and then, you know, adding to that feature, add a couple of things like I have plants next to mine. So again, it sort of tucks it away and it's not just a wall with a TV. You could add some small, uh, you know, armchairs as well on either side um, so that you could use those as extra seating for when guests come. Um, and yeah, just try and make it a feature rather than the big black hole that you that you dread. Thanks. Um, we've actually just got a question come through about the, um, uh, glass tables, which I mentioned before, uh, it's a question from Mark. He says, I'm a landlord renting properties in the area that attracts young families, but I'm concerned about the safety of the glass tables. Um, I think, uh, well, especially the suppliers which we use, um, they're very, very durable, thick glass tables. They're, they're meant for uh, either dining tables and coffee tables are very durable. And if you do come through an accident where they do break, um, they, they shatter into tiny, it's kind of like the, the car glass. It's very tiny little square, unscratchable uh, pieces, which are very safe. And um, and yeah, I definitely recommend it. We use it with our furniture packages and uh, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't um, not go for it if, if, that's, if that's your worry about safety. Um, right, I think... Um, I've got, sorry, sorry, I just cut everything there. Uh, oh, we've got another question come through here. Um, I've got an open, let's see. I've got an open living plan. This is from uh, Nikita. Uh, I've got an open plan living, dining and kitchen. How would I segregate the rooms after their own identity while still being spacey? Um, I think uh, Sarah kind of mentioned on that before. Do you want to have a chat about that, Sarah? Yeah, so for me, that's that's exactly where I am right now. I'm in an open plan, kitchen, dining, living space. And the way that I've done that is by using various different sort of uh, textures in the materials that I've got in here and then used a rug to zone the area. So in my kitchen, I have a breakfast bar, so that sort of ends the kitchen for me. But then the next part of that is my dining table and I've used a rug to zone that space so you know that that's not the kitchen anymore that's separate from the kitchen it's a dining space and then again the the sofa space is in its own as well it's got its own little lamp it's got the plants that sort of surround it and frame it um, so use different accessories um, to frame your different spaces but rugs are my go-to for trying to zone a large space okay. Okay, thank you everyone. I'm afraid that is all we have time for today. Um, but if you do have any other questions after seeing this, maybe once it's uh, not going live, then uh, you can send all of your uh, questions directly by email on um, at the webinar, which at the slide which is on the screen now, webinar at instardirect.com. 
And uh, feel free to email us anytime or call the office. We're happy to have a chat. Uh, we're depending on um, uh, kind of which career designers will get back to you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this class. Um, please also uh, follow Sarah uh, on her Instagram handle and follow Instar Direct to uh, on Instagram with loads of uh, inspirational designs uh, like Sarah's and um, and also top tips. We. Uh, post a lot of advice and, and topics that we've mentioned today too. Um, thank you so much for spending the time uh, with us today. Keep an eye out for that email we're going to send and we'll be sending you uh, shortly containing also a discount code for some of the products that we have here at Incel. So thank you very much. Take care. Thank you.